It's weird. We always wore the headphones before. I know. It's different, right? Yeah. Uh, in some ways, I like Liked. the headphones. Right. Like, sometimes it's weird for me to not have them. Yeah. Because you can really tell how loud you're talking. Right. Like, right now, I feel like I have no idea how loud it actually sounds in the microphone. Right. I actually guessed last week. You know Chris Cornell? Yeah. I actually uh, had him on last week, and I guessed because I just felt like he was too far away from the mic, and I was absolutely right. Yeah. You could tell on the recording. So I was oh, like, wow. hey, I'm, I'm guessing because I don't have headphones on, but you need. I think you need to be a little bit closer. A little closer, yeah. So he, yeah, I just like honed everything <clears throat> in, but. Yeah. I mean, it is a little bit more relaxed not having them on, but. Right. It felt more like, I don't know. It feels more, pro- it felt more professional. It felt like, like more a, in the zone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I'm still going to use them on MMA fools. Cause I feel like that's almost like a professional thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even though ESPN doesn't use them, but well, I yeah. still, we're not ESPN. Right. First. <laughs> right. I don't know if you guys, if anybody has realized that. I don't think they have. Okay. I think yeah, they definitely get confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best is right now we do. There's four of us for MMA fools now and we do them on that couch. Oh, that's awesome. So all four here, of you, uh, all, well, all three the, of them sit here. Yeah, all three of them sit there all cuddled up. Because uh, until I get that area done over there, I want to just do it over here. Right. Instead of uh, keep going back and forth. Right. Once that's done, then we'll leave it like that. Yeah. And we have a new name for the studio. It's the One You Feed Studios. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Have you seen the, well, it's just happened. Uh, you read that fable? Yes. I love it. Yeah, it's that, a good one. That and the War of Art are two things that have like helped me kind of change things up. Yeah. Because I was getting a little out of control. Yeah. yeah, and you've definitely made some changes, big changes, you know, in the last, what, you think, three months, four months? Yeah, pretty much since I got COVID. Yeah. Like, I started... I had just started going to the gym. Like, I think I went to the gym once before COVID. Right. And then I drank heavily. During. During having COVID. <laughs> did I tell you that story? Or yeah. Oh, you, yeah. 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 So uh, I drank heavily during that after I started feeling better because it did right. hit me hard at right. first. I suppose really quick we should say, hey, Hannah, thanks for coming back on the podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, but it was... Right after that, I just I just dove right in. Full, yeah, full yeah, that's what you said. You drank like a whole fifth and don't mm. remember it, or no, you do remember it. Like I you remember- weren't even like phased by it. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, oh shit, this isn't good. Yeah, I, yeah, I remembered it. <laughs> I was very scared, right? Because I didn't realize I had done it. I drank like a fifth and a quarter, close to maybe close to a fifth and a half, and I was like, this isn't good. And then I was and I was talking out loud, and I was like, I don't think I'm slurring. And so then I recorded a message and sent it to my friend Brian. And Brian was like, dude, you're not slurring. And I was like, this is not okay. Now, walking wasn't the best. (laughs) But it was like... Motor skills weren't really on point. Motor skills weren't on point, but I could hold a conversation with somebody and I didn't feel like that was okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's scary, man. Yeah. Sold my PlayStation. And now... I, I still have a drink sometimes, but it's a much healthier relationship. It's not even every week. Yeah. Uh, I reformatted Bastards of Bourbon. So now instead of doing eight to ten, we do three or four. Yeah. Um. Now, last week, the first time, it wasn't last week, a couple of weeks ago, the first time we did it, we then went to our buddy's house and drank a bunch of whiskey. But he just had a whole bunch of really rare things we've never seen. Right. It kind of had It kind of had more to do with that than it did getting drunk yeah I, mean, I ended up drunk but right well and it's different to do you know once in a while than every weekend or every other weekend mm. or you know a couple well, nights a week it honestly did the, the, the next step yeah because it was definitely a couple nights a week did the, the next step i got drunk after that i i wasn't happy at the end of the night like i actually ended up sitting up in bed and like writing notes about like this can't be you can't fall back into this habit right <clears throat> like i i, I love bourbon I always have some, but right. I can't let myself just get drunk all the time. Yeah. Just can't do it. I yeah. can't maintain everything I've started to do and do that. Yeah, man. You're preaching to the choir over here. <laughs> 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 I know all about it. You know, that the end of my, my run was a lot of nights like that. You know, everything started out a good time. And then by the end of the night, I'm sitting at home like, why am I, why am I doing this still? Mm-hmm. Why am I in this place? Why do I keep ending up here? 
you know, and then, uh, and then changes, you know, have to be made. Yeah. You, uh, you, you made them a lot sooner than your big brother here. <laughs> I did. I got, I got a jump start, but I think, I mean, I don't know. I think we just, uh, we had two, we were going two different, we, we were in two different directions. Yours was kind of a, you know, a come and a go and a slow pace here and there, you yeah. know, mine was like full blown, <clears throat> you know, heading in a dark place quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, in the grand scheme of things, there's really no place, like, if you're doing, like, with where I was at, at the point I'd gotten to, I was drinking most nights. Right. And I, uh, the point I was going, it was, it was going to dark places. Like, I wasn't even really drinking with anybody anymore. Right. I was just sitting at home playing Madden. Right. Drinking. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's really what happened to me i i hit that place in college when i got an apartment by myself there was most nights like i may go out to the bar but a lot of times like i was sitting home and you know drinking and doing everything else by myself yeah you know at tw- at 21 or 22 like that's not that's not normal that's crazy. <laughs> yeah couldn't, couldn't keep me in the house at yeah 22. <laughs> right it, it, it wasn't normal it was unhealthy you know mm. from the beginning so i think um I, I think that had a lot to do with it. And of course, you know, my influence of, you know, of Brad yeah. gave me a good jump start. I got a, I got a, a good example set in front of me and, you know, I jumped on that opportunity pretty quickly because I was he- heading in like such a, a bad and unhappy direction. You know, I just moved home. I really like didn't know what I was going to do. And, you know, as soon as that opportunity presented itself to just take a different direction in my life, I was like... I'll do anything at this point because what I'm doing right now sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the, the fun stops being as fun. Exactly. And then you start, like, I think we talked about it before. You start, like, realizing, like, man, I'm tired and beat up Ex- all the time. <clears throat> all the time. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah, there was just always, like, chaos and turmoil in my head. And, um, yeah, it's exhausting. Like, I was mentally exhausted all the time. And, uh, you know, it's nice not to have to feel that way. I will say that that was actually something I had to deal with, though. Like, my brain, when it was cleaned up, there was there was some trips there. Oh, yeah. Like, like man, like, I would catch myself doing things. I'm like, man, my drunk brain dialed down and, and clouded would have never acted this way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I actually prefer that part. For, like, I would say and do certain things to try to get a desired response. Right. And I was like, that's shitty. Yeah. And, and, that's manipulation. <laughs> yeah. And, but, it, but I didn't, I, I don't think I really did that with my drunk mind, but with my sober mind, all of a sudden it was something that was there. And yeah. I had to sit with that for a second. Like, yeah. okay, we got to rein all this in. Right. And then just even dealing with, you know, I'm diagnosed with severe anxiety and severe depression disorder. And I was really self-medicating. Right. By drinking all the time. So I had to start unpacking some of that as well. Right. Which now I, I feel pretty comfortable with. It's it's weird. It, it, the transition for all of it happened oddly fast, I'd say. Because when it first set in, I was like, I'm going to have to deal with this for a while. And then after a little while, like, you know, it still pops up. But after a little while, it's like, okay, I know how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, it. Well, and it does, I think, make it easier when you have like gained control of the self-medicating and you're not doing that as much because every time you do that, it just takes you, you know, 10 steps back. If you can keep at least chipping away moving forward, yeah, you know, and handling, you know, anxiety and, you know, depression and those things and you're not constantly setting yourself up for failure. I mean, at least that's how I felt every time I, I would drink, it would just take me 10 steps back from where, you know, I'd finally gotten myself to maybe a half decent point, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's exactly it. Cause you're not dealing with it. You're just pushing it out of your mind. Exactly. You're just, yeah. Setting it aside and letting it build up. And then, you know, and then it comes back tenfold every time. Yeah. I have something that definitely helps me is I just, I just talk about it openly with anybody and everybody. Yeah. And that's, that's what that, yeah that's crazy because that's exactly something that i had to do i was somebody that never talked about anything and even still today it's something like communication is not one of my best assets like it you know i like to like sit on things fester on things be pissed you know 
walk around carrying it around and you know making everybody miserable but i get to a lot quicker if i just talk about it yeah and as soon as i talk about it i'm like oh, okay like my my brain is blowing this way out of proportion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and as soon as i say it out loud i'm like okay you know it's not as bad as it seems uh you know and it it doesn't have to be that way yeah Reading seems to center me now, too. I read a lot more. I took the TV out of my bedroom. Yeah, so I remember I do, you saying that. If I do anything once I go to bed, I, I read. I don't even really look at my phone. Yeah. Which, that was a tough part to get rid of even looking at the phone. Oh, my gosh. Because it has to be in there. It's my alarm. Right. Me. Right. <laughs> but it's like, just leave it there. Right. Just, just set it down and don't pick it up and don't look at it. But right. that's hard, man. I'm like, I've got a severe addiction to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everybody does. I like, I'll pick it up and not even realize that like I'm scrolling. You know what I mean? I'll pick it up to check the time or God only knows what. And then the next thing I know, I'm like scrolling every social media app there is. And I'm yeah. like, why am I back on this? Yeah, I've gotten to a point now where I've used it pretty much specifically just to look at my stuff for the podcast um, and Be Kind's podcast, too, uh, just to look at that and just figure out the stats, see where they're heading and stuff like that, right. and then putting it back down. I mean, I do still hit the social media some, but part of that is also the podcast. But Yeah, you got to use it for promotion a little bit, but yeah, yeah it's tough. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a weird poison. It is. Yeah. And I I have gotten a little bit better. I think I used I mean, especially, you know, back when I was still like drinking and stuff, I, I used it a lot for uh like self satisfaction and you know, to get that instant gratification, you know, but, um, but then you post a certain picture and you're like, why did this one only get four? Likes? Right. I'm going to have to delete this. <laughs> <laughs> four likes. That's not, that's not bar. acceptable. Maybe I'll repost it again later at a better time frame. Uh, yeah. So it's not so much about, about that, uh, as much, you know, anymore, but it's still, is just an addiction to, yeah. to look at constantly. And I'm a terrible reader. So I do wish I was better at that. I wish I like enjoyed reading more, but usually by the time I'm like laying down at night, I'm as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm falling asleep. I'm getting this hair off the mic. Well, so honestly, sometimes I only end up reading like four or five pages. Yeah. But I just pick it up. At least it's yeah, yeah what it, you do before you fall asleep. And then sometimes, sometimes I'll think like I'm gonna fall right asleep, but I'll read four or five pages, and the next thing you know, I've been reading for a while. Yeah. But sometimes I even read during the day. Sometimes like it's. <clears throat> It's weird how much I don't even have TVs on anymore. Yeah. I'm either doing a workout or reading or right. just kind of sitting with myself, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I do a lot of, like, short readings. I do a lot of, like, daily recovery and daily, like, spiritual readings, like, yeah. you know, things like that, because it is good for me to, to read positive things each day or else my yeah. my regular mind will go to a lot of negative places so yeah. it's uh it's good for me to start and end my day with like positive readings have you ever read uh, i just started reading it uh, uh amanda actually gave me the book it's uh awakening it's um mm -hmm. god actually it's oh no awareness she's got like a bazillion notes in here so i don't know about that but it's actually a really cool book and it deals with not so much religion, but like kind of spirituality and it's short read, obviously, Yeah. but it's about uh, like the parts I'm in right now. talks about kind of selfishness and how actually selfishness isn't necessarily bad because you're taking care of yourself and things like that. But I highly recommend it so far that in Norse mythology is what I'm reading. And I highly recommend that. Don't know if I can even, try to pretend like i'm going to uh, <laughs> involve myself in that one but that one this book the awareness i might read <laughs> i won't pretend i'm gonna read the mythology book it's so good <laughs> i'm sure it is <laughs> oh man so what else has been up with you lately you know work yeah uh kids can't believe they're gonna be three and five next week that's crazy it's crazy can you even believe that i have a three-year-old and a five-year-old no. like that is honestly is insane to me yeah it's kind of crazy to me as well yeah i remember i remember like yesterday coming home from like the air force to visit and just putting you in a headlock right. and just dragging you to the ground <laughs> be like go to sleep <laughs> 
I was like, like, okay. Seems like yesterday we were still kids. I know. <laughs> I know. I can't. Yeah, I can't even believe that I'm like even responsible for two human lives. It's pretty crazy. But um, yeah. And then turning 30, you know, that was uh, that's something that's happened. That stress you out? Kind of. Like, I don't really get hung up on birthdays at all. I never really even thought about them. But then as I was approaching 30, I was like, oh, my God, my life is about to change forever. (laughs) Everything's about to be so different. (laughs) Exactly. I like I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but whatever it was, it didn't happen. (laughs) Everything pretty much stayed the same. Yeah, pretty much. I still uh, bought this shirt in the kids section at Gabe's today. So So weird. Right. So I don't know. I guess 30 really doesn't mean anything. (laughs) I was like, am I still going to be able to wear Jordans? Like, can I still wear crop tops? Yeah. Do I need to still be, like, do I need to change as a person? No. No. No, I guess not. I think that, I feel like that's a way that so many people think. Like, I think you see, like, older people and you're like, look at how they dress. I know. Is that how I'm going to have to dress? Right. But no. I guess not. Right. No, no. Yeah. I don't know. That's something I, like, go th- back and forth in my head all the time, honestly, which I don't know really if it even matters, but I'm just like... Do I need to be more professional? Like, should I be wearing Jordan? Should I be wearing ripped jeans? Like, is any of that appropriate? I don't know. Like, I have children. Huh. But, like, I could, I still need to be who I am and who I'm comfortable right. being. And that's, like, and that's how you would... That's how you want to raise Ruby and Bronson, right? Right. You don't want them to change just because of some silly number, right? Right, and not (laughs) yeah, not even number in society. I mean, I really, you know, you should just be who you want to be, and that's exactly what I want to portray to my kids. You know, just because you know I hold a you know a position in the community now, like I still am still going to be me, right? You know, and and the style of dress and anything like that doesn't change the fact that you're a good person. You know what I mean? Right. Or that you're a responsible person. <laughs> right. Or any of that. It's just, right. And that's what I, yeah, I try to like tell myself and I don't know, I don't think everybody thinks that way. So I, I get hung up on it sometimes, but I think, uh, you know, I know who I am. I know I'm true to myself. I know I'm well-educated and yeah. just because I want to wear, you know, Jordans and crop tops doesn't mean I, I don't know you know yeah my my business <laughs> i am not well educated but i'm also going to keep dressing how i dress <laughs> <laughs> you're you are well educated just in a whole completely different uh format than i am <laughs> yeah. school just didn't seem like it was for me <laughs> yeah i can't even believe i made it through school so yeah well, and you just kept doing it yeah uh, well because i didn't know what the fuck else to do <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not ready to do anything else. So if I can just keep riding this college thing out for a little bit <laughs> longer. Keep doing this. Like, I wonder if I can just be a college student for the rest of my life. Right. I, I remember at one point I heard that if you were like taking classes till you were 65, you didn't have to pay off your student loans. And I was like, that doesn't sound so bad. Might, oh, just, might just do it. Maybe that's how I get, get out of it. I mean, I'm only like 25 years away at this point. <laughs> just take a couple classes at a time. Just yeah. take out all the student loans, take all the classes, yeah. and then... And then, here, then they'll and, just drop off when you're 65. And then I mean, I'll hopefully be retired by then and have no use for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Although I doubt that. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm pushing 40 and I really don't see any difference except for I feel like I'm finally waking up and starting to put some things together. So yeah. I waited long enough. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's just how it has to happen. I don't know. Timing is never how we perceive it to be. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I always think that there's going to be like a some sort of specific time frame on things or they're supposed to work out in a certain amount of time. And there's some the, the plan's so much bigger than we we ever yeah. see it to be. You know, all the uh, all the bumps in the road that you've been through are going to take you to exactly where you need to be. Yeah, I kind of feel like. Um, you know, dad obviously worked his ass off forever, but I, I feel like I'm also at the age where he really started putting together his stuff, you know, like, yeah. I mean, like his own business or like the path of pins. And right. So yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that is really when he kind of started settling down and getting his shit together. Yeah. I mean, he always worked his ass off, but he didn't. Right. He Which was, you do too. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always work probably harder than you need to <laughs> yeah probably because i'm also i was also hung over right <laughs> exactly you weren't making it easy on yourself i, I was not <laughs> that's what one thing i thought when i uh when this 
all first started and I was like, you know what? I think I really am going to drink less. I'm like, I'm going to have so much more time. I actually don't. Because I, like, <laughs> right. I get up at like, you know, six, seven in the morning, go to the gym and then I come home, do some things around here and I'm like, all right, I got to eat. I'm like, I should probably nap before I have to go to work at two. Right. And then I work from two to 10, come home, do a couple of things and then. Turn you know, around and it's do a, it again. It's 11 o'clock, uh, 1130 at night. And I'm like, well, I better go to bed. I got to get up at six or seven for the gym. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know all about that, too. It's crazy. It seems it seems just like a lot. But then it, when you're doing it, like I, when I sit down and think about it, it seems like a lot. But what else would I be doing with my time anyway? Right. Like, really, what else do you need like a bunch of free time for? I mean, at least you're filling your time with good things and positive yeah. things. You're going to work. You're going to the gym. You're eating. Yeah. <laughs> Before I was playing Madden and drinking till four or five in the morning and then getting up in time to get ready for work. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely not healthy. No? You don't think so? No. I was thinking about trying to buy my PlayStation back. <laughs> Did you act? Is it actually out of here? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I knew the yeah. last time we had talked, it was like sold, but it was still here. So I'm yeah. glad to glad to know it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's actually gone. And uh, I, weirdly, I still think like it was a big part of the problem. Like, like I said, obviously the drinking was a problem, right? Um, but like, come like the one night I came home, I was on my way home, and I was like, I'm gonna have a drink when I get home. And then I got home, and I was like, What am I gonna do? Am I just gonna sit here and have have a drink? And then what? And then just sit here. And I was like. <laughs> I'm probably, I'm just going to go to bed. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't justify just sitting here and having a drink. <laughs> it's like, it's just get, get some sleep. I'm just going to go to sleep. That's <laughs> yeah. such a better idea. You know what else is good for stress? Sleep, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what am I, 40? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It, it is still weird for me though. Like I, I, I feel the need to talk about it sometimes. So I'm just like, it's, it's so different for me for how I lived for so long. So long, yeah. Like I basically went through two or three 21 year old phases because of you and PJ, right? And I just, I went hard for yeah, a long, a long time. A long time, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. And talking about it is. I mean, I we still talk about it all the time at him. Like, yeah. you know, it's crazy to even think past that or like that we got past that or you know yeah. that we even lived that way for so long yeah. yeah and i mean you even more so than me yeah probably like an extra 20 years old right <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually kind of surprised i'm holding together okay right. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i'm very grateful that you're still here with me <laughs> <laughs> i said something to mom the other day because I, I haven't actually seen her for a while, so she hasn't seen... Because I've lost, like, 35 pounds mm -hmm. and put on a decent amount of muscle. And so mom hasn't even seen me. And I was talking to her, and I was just telling her how much better I felt and how I felt motivated and stuff like that. And she was... She said... She said, good. I was I was actually getting pretty worried about your drinking. I'm like, you probably should have said something. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But don't worry, Bastards of Bourbon is still gonna be around. Yeah. I'm not gonna completely give up my bourbon. I just a healthier relationship with it. It just seems so weird to say. Yeah. But it's a good thing. It's definitely a positive thing and you can still enjoy it without, you know, having to, to live in it yeah, constantly. To live in it and binge in it. And right. That's uh because I definitely I wouldn't be able to maintain the things that I maintain now. Right. You know, or uh, to go the places you, you know, go to the places you want to be. I think, yeah, right. it just hinders you so much. Like I said, I felt like, you know, it wasn't even that I drank every single day, you know, all day. I certainly wasn't that type of person, but it was just like when I did drink, it just took me so far back. I couldn't ever get accomplished anything I really wanted to accomplish. Yeah. You know, like I'd have all these grandiose plans and ideas, but I could never get there because. If the opportunity came up to like go and party or go and drink, that's what I was gonna do. Right. Well, and then you're hung over for a day or two. Right. Like especially if you like drink Friday and Saturday. Right. And then you're like, okay, well I'll just recover Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. Right. And then by <laughs> Wednesday, I'm like, okay, let's. It's the middle of the week. I haven't drank for two days because I was hung over. <laughs> Time to drink. <laughs> Time to drink. I'm sure there's a happy hour somewhere. Right. <laughs> I deserve one. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long week. Right. It's, it's been two days. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
seriously, but that's how like messed up my head is, you know? And, yeah. it'll, and your brain is powerful and it'll justify and it's crazy. I mean, you know, we, I think I was on it probably about this time last year and like then in January of last year, like I was really going through some like very heavy stuff like at home and then work started getting really busy and um, you were picking up time at Manfred's there for a short period yeah. of time. And I like was like, I got to get out of my house. I got to leave. And I'm telling like my brain is telling me just stop at Manfred's and see Dave. Yeah. And like, you know, you just need to talk to him. But like what my brain was really telling me was like, you need to go there and have a drink. Yeah. Which I wouldn't have let you drink. Right. (laughs) Thank God. But you know, like six years in and that's like still how manipulative my brain, you know, my brain and like my disease will be against me is trying to get me to like at a weak point and tell me that it you know it's going to be different this time if i drink it's going to be okay (laughs) it's not (laughs) yeah because it's definitely it's it's a it's a conscious thing because you know it it would definitely even with me being able to do how i've done it so far like it's still that's why i sat with sat and made notes the one day like i really wasn't even as drunk as i had gotten in the past but i'd got to that i'd gotten close to that point right and I was just so I, that's why I sat and made those notes. I was like, "Listen, you can't you can't go back there, right?" Um, because of how your mind works, You'll yeah. Because I I had done it before where I said, "All right, I need to like not drink for like a couple of weeks or a month," and then I would I drink the one time, and I'd be like, "Well, you drank, so you might as well drink tonight too," and then exactly. start over yep. here, right? So and then you start losing sight of that start over point. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Then you're like, well, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. I I can drink and this is okay. Fine. Right. So I still go to work. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that, and that's, yeah, yeah, the biggest thing. You start justifying it by little things like that. And you're like, well, you're barely making it there. <laughs> <laughs> you're usually about five minutes late. <laughs> right. And you're waking up right before you have to be there. <laughs> right. Jumping in a cold shower real fast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The, uh, I'll tell you something else I've really become accustomed to now that i've been, well because i was doing 75 days hard yeah 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 you told me you were gonna tell me about that yeah well and so I, what all does that entail because i don't i don't even know what that so is so it's 75 days of sobriety okay um also you get to pick your diet mm-hmm. but then you get zero cheat days mm. um they, they let you pick your diet i think because you may your plan may be to bulk it may be to shred right it may be whatever um so then zero cheat days with that 10 day or uh, 10 pages of non-fiction reading every day mm. two 45 minute workouts a day one has to be outside <laughs> one has to be outside uh you have to drink a gallon of water a day Ugh. uh that's the hardest part i know that is I bet. so hard like I, everybody was like you're not gonna drink for 75 days and honestly that that didn't really seem like an issue for me I'm right like, yeah that that'll, that'll be fine I right mean, not gonna be my favorite thing but i don't care but the gallon of water. It's like, hard. It's a lot of water. Man. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, like every five minutes, you got to be like, take a drink. Yeah. Take a drink. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. So then I find, I would go through spurts like, all right, I'm going to drink like a, four bottles of water right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, is that it? I think that might be it. But, uh, but I, I do have to start over because I fucking, not because I drank. Right. But I... Drink Was, Dr. Pepper. Well, I, what diet are you doing? Uh, it's basically just one to try to lean, but whole foods, not no sugar. Just getting my like sugar low from sugar, right. get, getting my sugar from the good sources of you right, know, not like whole adding foods. sugar, right? Um, and I just wasn't even thinking about it. I was eating this uh, prepped meal. And I was like, you know, I'd go good with this. And I haven't had in a long time a Dr. Pepper. You know why you haven't had in a long time? Because <laughs> you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I drank that Dr. Pepper. And I sent a message to somebody talking about it they were like dude you just you just fucked up and i at first i was a, a little pissed off that i was told that i'd fucked up i'm like it's not a cheat meal it's fucking 12 ounces it would have been worse if i had a gatorade <laughs> and then i was like fuck they're fuck right, they're right. <laughs> god damn it <laughs> and now i'm at the point too where i also think like i i do so good with food and stuff anyway that right. i'm almost mad at myself that i'm trying to do this 75 day thing right because i'm like i'm doing i'm already doing well i'm, do, I'm doing great <laughs> right like, and this wasn't even my idea it was this other guy's idea and i'm not even sure he's doing it 
he messaged me like the first two days. The first one, uh, uh, shout out to Draws. I love the guy. He's he's a great guy, a good friend. Uh, he does that fresh nutrition. Oh yeah, it was his idea. He came over for the fights uh, like a week or so ago, and we were talking about how we wanted to like do some things and like push each other. And I was like, yeah. So I, I messaged him with like, hey, let's just do thirty days, absolutely no drinking. And he was like, I found this thing, the seventy five days hard. And I was like, all right, let's start it Monday. This was on like Thursday. And he was like, no, man, we're starting tomorrow. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, all right, here we go. And then I see him at Garden Grill at uh, 11 in the cigar bar. And I'm like, so, you doing good? And uh, he's like, ah, oh, man, I didn't get the reading in, so I'm just going to have a drink tonight, <laughs> and then I'll start tomorrow. And in my head, I didn't even I didn't even say it to him, but in my head, I was like, dude, it's 11. You could go home and read 10 pages right now. <laughs> right. You can pull out your phone and read <laughs> 10 read pages that. right now. <laughs> You don't have to read a whole book. Right. <laughs> you didn't have to read all day. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. And then my other friend was like, so what are you going to do? Are you just going to stop too? I was like, no, I'll just keep showing the young guy up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you might as well keep doing it. Yeah, drink a fucking Dr. Pepper. I mean, a, a Dr. Pepper of all things to sacrifice it on. I know. I mean. Like, and I never drink Dr. Pepper. <laughs> that was like even what I said in my head. Like, oh, I haven't had Dr. Pepper and I don't know how long. Let me. Have a Dr. Pepper. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Start keeping Coke Zeros at the fucking restaurant. Right. <laughs> yeah, bad choice. Yeah, I think Steve's a little bummed about the 75-day hard thing, though. Yeah, 75 days without bourbon. Yeah. What are you well, going to do? Are well, you, they just going to taste and you'll just observe? <laughs> well, that's what I told him. I said either he can, like, we can just announce to everybody that I'm doing the 75 days hard, and I can either, like, still, like, host Right. With him, or he can even have like a temporary host with them, have a different person on each week or yeah. each episode, right? Or whatever. But seventy five days is a long fucking. It is time. a long time, like yeah. <clears throat> and especially because like I I don't hardly ever eat sweets anyway. Like right. I have like those be kind sweets down there, and before I started this, like every once in a while I'd take like a piece out, right? You know what I mean, right? So I, it's, in my head, I'm like, is. Is 75 days really necessary? Right. That is a lot. Yeah. and But then I also think like, but you said you were going to do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, one of those things I like, oh, if I said I was going to do it, I should probably do it. Yeah, like, I can't. I can't. I'm having this really. I'm having this inner battle in my head right now. I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I think no matter what, I should at least do the 30 no drinking. Yeah. Which after I did drink the Dr. Pepper, I did go have a bourbon with uh <laughs> with john last night well because i said i'm gonna start over monday well yeah i was like you know i'm gonna eat whatever i want to eat this weekend and do and a reset start over. Yeah. yeah i mean i think 30 days really for anything is sufficient yeah but. i was I, I think that might be what i end up doing i haven't decided we'll keep you guys updated <laughs> dun, dun, dun. i'm sure you guys care <laughs> yeah so they'll be dying to know what happens in the next 30 days <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but the outside workouts are really gonna keep freaking out my neighbors yeah yeah Cause... they probably think you're a psychopath <laughs> yeah well especially because especially you... it's because so cold i yeah. mean of all times like it's been the coldest in the yeah last, well like, and, week. and i go out there with no shirt on and do it in that you are a psychopath in that big <laughs> biking chain over there oh i'm my wearing God. that <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing still mace workouts, so it looks like I'm using a weapon. Right. <laughs> and then the other day I was standing there, because in between I would just like put my hand on the top of the mace and just kind of sit there and kind of like, for lack of a better term, like meditate right. letting the snow hit me. Because this day it was snowing. <laughs> and I look over and my neighbor's cleaning off his car, but he's frozen, <laughs> just staring at me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh hey. hey. <laughs> you're like kind of big and burly anyway i'm sure people are like who is this dude <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here all right pack up the kids we're moving the property value is going down <laughs> we are not safe there's some... or maybe they're safer i don't right, know <laughs> right that's what i can't decide like there's this crazy viking man in the yard but i feel like nobody's gonna try to break in anyway right <laughs> <laughs> have you seen those metal bats he plays with <laughs> <laughs> what's hilarious is when i was at valley last night uh uh, they told me that uh, Allie, because you know Allie works yeah. for Mary. She was like, she says you go out in your front yard and do yoga <laughs> <laughs> with no shirt on. <laughs> I said yoga. Like, what does she think that thing is used for? In yoga. <laughs> it's a big metal weapon. <laughs> it's not very peaceful. And I'm usually like in- aggressively swinging. <laughs> 
and I get it. Well, and I have my headphones in and I get into it. And next thing you know, I'm probably like growling and grunting. <laughs> so, most violent yoga ever. <laughs> oh. she, she said you do yoga. That is hilarious. I said, I said, now I'm really going to start putting on a show. <laughs> I think Mary told me to tell me like, hey, maybe don't do it anymore. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to go out there and like my boxers and actually do yoga. <laughs> Oh man, that is so funny. Oh man, I was dying. I was oh. I was so happy. I think I think Mary expected me to be like embarrassed. Embarrassed? No. I'm like that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody's recording it. That's what I'm saying. I'm definitely going to message her and be like, please send me a video. <laughs> Oh my god. That is so funny. The other day, uh, one one of the other days when I did it out there. The people that live across the street, they just sat in their car for a while in the driveway. I'm like, they're probably just like, look at this fucking idiot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, pretty soothing. <laughs> yeah, I think it works well for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you could tell by me having a couple of different podcasts one night. I'm not real shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real breaking the norm type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And I, Somebody asked me why I don't do it in the backyard. Well, the first time I did it, I didn't know if I was actually going to be able to handle the cold. So I right. did it in the front yard in case I decided, Needed like, what the quickly. hell am I doing? Right. Let me run back inside. Right. Because um, the first time I did it, it wasn't even for the 75. I was just like, I woke up in the morning and it was snowing. And I was like, I want to go work out in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but now, now I've, I just feel like it's a good show to put on for people. <laughs> It seems like the people like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're talking about it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Word is spreading fast. <laughs> right. Uh, no, uh, no press is bad, or all press is good press. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> Lunatic in front yard swinging metal <laughs> weapons. Oh my god. We uh, I did have to buy running shoes because the other day I. Woke up and my mind was like racing. I was like, I'm just going to go for a run. I had some like weird dream. I don't even remember what it was, but I was like, I'm going to go for a run. And I just have those shell toes because, you know, oh, me, yeah. I've never been somebody who owns a bunch of pair of shoes. Right. I have like a pair or, of like, shoes. Or like really goes running. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would go running every once in a blue moon and run way too far and have to call somebody to pick me up. <laughs> one, one time I ran from that mom's old house, uh-huh. the family house, right. and I ran to Bob Evans. Oh, yeah. And then I had to have somebody come get me. I'm like, You're I like, can't oh, run what? back. What? <laughs> I ran from like one side of Wintersville to the other side of Steubenville. Right. <laughs> and you're like, uh, now I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. Now somebody has to come get me. Right. Uh, p- please. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> My legs are. I'm laying down. <laughs> People are looking at me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new, but I need help. <laughs> the, uh, but so I did, I, and it was cold and rainy, still dark out, and I no shirt. Just ran around this block here and up that hill and got back in. And my shins were hurting for like. Oh, I'm sure. Three you ran days. in the shelters? Yeah. Oh, gosh. They were hurting for like three days. Well, they're the only like tennis shoes I have. Yeah. I have like those. I'm honestly surprised you didn't go out there barefoot. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a possibility I thought about that. And yes. then I was like, oh, rocks. Oh, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> That's, wrong with me. <laughs> That's really what I would have pictured, but it's okay that you ran in your shoes. I would, uh, I'm going to start reading more of this David Goggins. Next thing you know, I'll be like, shoes are for pussies. Cause, <laughs> right. Because that's how he is. Right. I remember you telling me about him. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's hilarious. There's actually uh, somebody, somebody wrote him this thing. I want to see if I can find it real quick. But they wrote him this thing.
want to spend too much time looking for it. But basically, this guy uh, messaged David Goggins, and he says, fuck you, David Goggins. My kid is uh, running around the house. He asked if he cried when he was born, and we told him, yeah, of course you did. And he was like, pussy. And he's got real <laughs> mad at himself and this and that. And he's like going on, and he's like, he's four. <laughs> So, so it's obviously a joke, but it, he goes on for a long rant, and it's really hilarious. Oh, and Dave, man. And David Goggins actually re- responded to him, and he is like, "I know this was written as a joke, but I love the mentality." <laughs> <laughs> so he said, "His four-year-old's running around saying, who's going to carry the boat?'" <laughs> That dude's a maniac. He's a maniac, for mm-hmm. real. He has yeah. the uh, the world, the Guinness Book of World Records for pull-ups in 24 hours. Yeah, didn't you tell me? Wasn't it like 3,000? Like f- three or 4,000. Yeah. Like, just insane. How? Yeah. You like, your hands that? had to be bleeding. Right. You know? Could I would like? Could you move your arms the next day? Were you out of commission for like a week? Yeah. Like I don't know. I do like five or ten. Yeah. In a day, and the next day, I'm like, oh, my arms are sore. I've just gotten to the point where I can do like five or six at a time again. Right. Because you know, when I first went back to the gym, I was two hundred thirty-five right. pounds. Right. Pretty big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I you like, had a lot to lift up there. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, dips were fine. <laughs> yeah, right. I did those the other day without you there, and I was like, you'd be so proud of me. Yeah? Yeah. You had it locked in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was doing so much better. Because <laughs> your first day, you just swung all over the like, place. I was just like flailing around like a fish out of water. <laughs> and, I always, and I just, I know you was being so fit, and I was like, why are you moving like that? <laughs> It literally looked like I had never worked out in my life. Like, I was, like, swinging like this all over the place. He was like, what is going on here? Like, hey, lock it in. I can. I know your core strong. Lock yourself up here. It we, was embarrassing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember we just were both surprised because you, uh, you were also like, my arms are exhausted. They were. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but uh, hitting it with you a couple times inspired me to... I've been going there quite a bit now in the mornings and hitting some different types of workouts. Yeah, I think I think it's good to mix it up. I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start trying to figure out doing some CrossFit stuff here and there. But like, I, you know, I, I don't have any desire to do like deadlifts and snatches. Yeah, which I mean, I think you know the Olympic lifting part of it isn't something that necessarily needs to be incorporated. I mean, I enjoy that. Like, I like the. I like the challenge of like lifting like cleans and snatches and stuff like that. But I, what I like about CrossFit is like getting my heart rate up while like using weights. Cause I think that's yeah. what burns the most fat for me. Mm-hmm. I think like when I started noticing a change in my like fitness was when I started doing that because it, I think that's what like <clears throat> really started to find like all of my muscles basically. Yeah. I think my diet and then the way that I do work out. Cause you know, I, I keep my heart rate up by walking like right. in between my reps, I don't just stand around stand, right. or sit on the bench or whatever. Right. I get up, I walk around and keep my heart rate up. Cause I mean, it's obviously worked to some extent. Yeah. Um, but I, the, the, the deadlifts and stuff like that, like I just worry about my back. Yeah. You know, I worry about those. Yeah, those injuries. absolutely. Cause I don't want to like tweak something and then have to not work out for a week. Right. Yeah. And there's really no, like, there's really no point in like having to lift like lift the heaviest or mm-hmm. you know really to to snatch for any reason there's really no reason to do it at all yeah. like there's really, <laughs> like really I like CrossFit as well too just because like I do feel like uh it is like a very functional fitness mm-hmm. you know you're doing a lot of movements that you do in 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 real life yeah. and um so I, I like that aspect of it too you know like I was shoveling snow the other morning like after I left the gym and I feel like CrossFit has helped me like train to do things like that without being like, oh man, my back is killing me or all my arms are so sore. You know, I can do that and not have to feel like blowed out after. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's weird when you like, I always notice when I pick certain things up. Yeah. Like uh, this used to feel real heavy. Right. And now it's like, ah, it's not big It's not that bad. Yeah. Um, But actually talking about the diet, because I've been with that 75 day, I was kind of focusing on it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've, especially doing the two workouts a day, I realized how important the food is for your energy. Oh my gosh. Because uh, somebody was helping me with it and they were like, you, you need to start eating more. More. And I was like, but I feel good. Like I feel great. But then I went to the gym one morning and I had taken pre-workout and everything and I could have slept 
right where I right where I was sitting. Right. And I was like, fuck, I do. I have to start eating more. So then I went overboard one day and for breakfast I had uh fillet tips uh <laughs> that I cooked in two pieces of bacon uh on with avocado half an avocado. This was for breakfast? Yeah. Fillet like steak? <laughs> yeah. Ew. <laughs> with a half an avocado and uh and some rice. <laughs> what? It was, it was it was damn near twelve hundred calories. And I wasn't hungry for like a day and a half. <laughs> Why would you eat any of that for breakfast besides the bacon? <laughs> Rice is not a breakfast food. Oh man. So I mean I think any of it's oh I'll add three eggs. Ugh. That's a lot of food. It was a lot of food. Yeah. And I, I seriously I legitimately wasn't hungry for like a day and a half. Yeah. And Somebody pointed out to me, they were like, so what's crazy about that is you could have ate one Big Mac and it would have been 1,200 calories and you You would have been been hungry hungry again. I'm like, man, that stuff is poison. Mm -hmm. Like you can, if you, if that's what you eat all day, you can end up eating like 4,000 calories. And and not even like realize how much you're eating. Yeah. It's crazy. It's scary that, yeah, people don't realize like how, how bad that, that food is for you. Yeah. Like if you think about Mm -hmm. it, like all the food I just mentioned was the same as one Big Mac Mm -hmm. and I would have been hungry three hours later. Right. That's crazy. Right. They're trying to kill you. They are. <laughs> they really are. All of them. And yeah. It's delicious. And it is. Yeah. That's the worst part is all the best foods, all the best tasting foods are so bad for you. But, you know, I, when I cook, like, I love the, how that stuff tastes. Well, yeah, absolutely. But the convenience. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, I, I didn't even really realize how much fast food I was eating just because I was like, well, I'm in a hurry. So exactly. I'm going to grab uh, this quarter pounder mm, double quarter pounder with uh yeah you know a large fry mm-hmm. large fry and uh you know i don't really drink soda that often but i'm here so a uh, large coca-cola please <laughs> <laughs> okay. quick six thousand calories right. let's go <laughs> and what am i gonna have for dessert later because i'm going to be hungry <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah not even feel like you just ate that many calories it's it is mind-blowing yeah. but like when you eat that many calories of like whole foods you're like oh my god i'm so full i'm gonna die yeah i, I was i was so full i laid yeah. down and i stayed I, laid down. I stayed laying down i ate it right there on that couch <laughs> and then i just laid down till it was time to shower and for a minute i was like uh actually that was the mcdonald's meal where i thought i was gonna call off of work but uh i laid there and i was like whoo I got to get up and it's hard to move right now. And then even when I got to work, I was like, all right, I'm supposed to still eat like another 800 calories. Today. Right. I'm like, I can't eat anything. anything I didn't right. eat anything the whole rest of that day. I didn't eat anything until I went back to work the next day. Wow. I was that full. Yeah. And I didn't feel hungry at any point in time. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I used to, you know, I went through a phase where I was like really big on like counting and watching what I, not even watching, but like very diligent about how much I ate of what. And, um, man, I just try to like listen to my body now. Like if I'm hungry, I eat and I just try to make sure that it's real, like yeah. whole foods. I mean, obviously I still snack, but if my body's telling me I'm hungry, like I'm just going to eat, you know, I feel like I work out enough to be able to to do that yeah the the biggest reason i'm like counting and watching now is actually just to make sure i eat enough enough yeah because to go to the gym take harambe blood pre-workout and be ready to take a nap right like i gotta I, that tells me i need more fuel well and you're absolutely right like i can feel that too like when i feel lethargic all the time it's not because i'm like overworked or or tired it's because i'm not it, <clears throat> It, it usually is because I'm not eating enough or I'm eating too much of like processed foods that mm-hmm. aren't actually fueling my body. Like I'll still be getting up at five and going to the gym, working all day, coming home, you know, doing the whole routine. But if I'm eating like eating out for lunch and then, you know, we just do something quick at home at night, then I'm then I'm not getting enough calories of good food. So I feel exhausted all the time. Yeah. I mean, you can 100 <clears throat> percent tell a difference when you're fueling your body with good foods rather than quick foods yeah yeah and that that's been the biggest thing for me because once i realized that because and i'm also just not used to eating that much before i 
started all this, I would eat maybe once a day and then snack a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now that's that's not feasible. Yeah. I'm I'm burning too much. Right. And especially doing the two workouts a day. Yeah. I just it just wasn't enough. And I because of how I felt like I didn't feel hungry. I didn't feel I was like, no, I'm fine. Like right. I'm, I'm gonna be fine. People were right. I had to eat more. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> there they go again, telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then in my thing too was is I, I'm also trying to keep losing weight. Like I'd like to, mm-hmm. I'd like to hit, you know, 180 if possible, 185 right. somewhere around. But there. you still have to eat enough calories to be able to lose weight, or else your body just holds on to that because yeah. it thinks you're in starvation mode. <laughs> it's like I need to keep all of this in because you are not feeding me enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you won't lose weight. Yeah. So I've had to learn all of that. Yeah. Science. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid how it works. <laughs> less food, less weight. <laughs> wrong (laughs) bullshit yeah (laughs) seems so simple yeah i think it's uh you know interesting to people i mean people will and i I don't know i think we've probably talked about this before but with like being vegan they're like well where do you get your protein how do you get enough protein what what sources do you get protein from and i'm like truly i don't even need that much protein like people eat an abundance of protein and if you don't work hard enough and work out enough to burn that protein or use that protein it just turns into fat and sugars anyway like (laughs) i mean i i eat enough for my body weight and that's yeah that's not that much yeah when that was that's that was the weird thing for me too is like pretty much the basis of my everyday diet is meat right and i was also being told i needed to eat more protein right it's because of how much more i was burning right like when i like i'll eat a thousand calories and then chest day is the day that i burn the most calories you Mm -hmm. know you did the one with me start out with like 150 reps at of dumbbell press i hated it <laughs> i never did that one again <laughs> it's a lot it was so much yeah it's like you're i really fight to get through the first part of that yeah. day it took forever <clears throat> it felt like it was yeah, yeah. it's hard <laughs> but when i add that into the app i have like that thousand that thousand calorie meal almost i just burn it all right like that they, they told me i burn a thousand calories doing that workout and right like, son of a bitch now I have to still have to eat two thousand more calories. Right. The fuck. Right. <laughs> That's so much. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> You're like force feeding yourself by the end of the day. Oh, it's crazy. Right. But then, I, but then I do feel good at the end of the day. Right. But at the time, I'm like, I can't keep eating this. Right. And I, like I just, I just ate all this food. I've had two protein shakes. Right. <laughs> I did get good grass fed uh, whey protein. Protein though, from on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do protein a little bit. Like if we make a smoothie bowl at the end of the day or something, I'll, I'll throw some protein in it. Yeah. But, um, but that vegan protein is actually real good for you too. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of other good stuff in it too besides just protein. Like it doesn't taste great. But. Yeah, I we get the strawberry one usually. We throw it in a smoothie yeah. bowl. It's not that bad. My grass fed one doesn't taste great either. Yeah, I, I mean protein like in a, general is really not that great. I add like a teaspoon of. Like, like chocolate sugar. or something oh, chocolate. to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I don't care. I'm not counting that one as a cheat. No. <laughs> it's a teaspoon. And I need it. <laughs> I've got to choke this sucker down. Right. Do you also just scoop that into your mouth and drink it? <laughs> like your pre-workout. <laughs> Just scoop a protein, swing a milk. You would probably choke and die. Oh my god, be terrible. Just, just I would like burp later, and it just be powder. (laughs) (laughs) I never thought I would like. I, I was. We were talking about before the podcast. Like, I can't believe all the time I wasted with shakers. Oh yeah, because I always shook up my pre workout. Right now, I just scoop it. Yeah, so much easier. So much faster. Right. Instead of me fighting down drinking the, exactly because yeah. even sipping it down is miserable anyway yeah because none mean, of them taste right like, no that harambe blood it's supposed to taste like the red starburst which yeah. it, it kind of does right but it also kind of tastes like chemicals in my mouth yeah <laughs> <laughs> right so like, just pesticide right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're not delicious. I don't care. No, they're not. Like, I've always bought the ones I thought tasted the best. That one yeah. I actually went with because I, I was using the BSN uh, NO Explode. Oh, yeah, I've used that one before. But it stopped really working. Mm-hmm. I, like, I wasn't getting the same effect, so I had to switch it up. Man, I haven't taken pre-workout since before I had Ruby. 
But I do remember, like, when I the first couple times I took it, and I was like, holy shit, like, this really makes you feel, like, like ready, ready to, to go. go. <laughs> yeah. That's what was so startling to me when I was ready to take a nap after yeah. taking it the other day. I was like, what's wrong with me? This <laughs> can't be good. Am I dying? Am I dying? <laughs> My body's shutting down. <laughs> this is a good one. My kidney's okay? <laughs> the, uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's so crazy, too, because I don't know how many years I've had those... I love everything on it, for those who aren't aware. Um, but I had those 10-pound clubs forever, and you'd mess with them before, and yeah. they seem real heavy. Right. Well, now they're they're nothing to me, so I, I bought 15-pound ones. Oh, you did get them. Oh, yeah. good, because I know the last time we talked, you were talking about it. Yeah, they were out of stock, but then it, it was so funny, because I had a $30 coupon, too, which all it did was take off the shipping. <laughs> <coughs> Go figure. Heavy R- things cost a lot to ship. Bullshit. Yeah, it's shenanigans. <laughs> Still the same carrying distance. Right. <laughs> so, um, but it's crazy how much heavier they feel. Like, actually, I'm going to hand you one because it doesn't feel like it's only five pounds. It's insane. So here's the 10 pound. Which... I mean that feels more feels like it's more than ten. Right. Now here's the fifteen pound. Oh god. <laughs> what do you do with this? Oh my god. It's so heavy, it's breaking my wrist. Uh, so so I do a full <laughs> workout with them. Oh my god, I seriously thought my arm was gonna break. <laughs> I did not know I was such a weak bitch. <laughs> uh, it's like your first trip to the gym with me all over again. <laughs> Jesus. I like think I'm so cool in my garage. And I take one step out and I'm like, I have no idea what's really going on. <laughs> I really wish some, uh, I really wish some gyms would incorporate that stuff. Uh, the steel it's, mace and the clubs. They probably have to take out like liability insurance in case anybody S- decides start- to lose their shit. Right. <laughs> Listen, you could hurt anybody with any weight. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Actually, when I was in high school, some kid got beat with a dumbbell. Oh man. Yeah. Fucking crazy is that? A big red? No, it was oh. at Indian Creek of all places. Ugh. Yeah, you'd think big red. I know. The ghetto school. <laughs> right. No, everything's fine over there. Yeah, right. Watch out for the country boys. <laughs> right. <Indian Creek>. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Um. <clears throat> I actually even asked at Planet Fitness. They looked at me like I was insane. I was like, you guys think you can get like some steel maces and clubs in here? And they're like, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't even entertain the thought. Yeah. Like, well, you guys got kettlebells. They're like, what? <laughs> Sorry. I'll Never just mind. Don't go about my day. <laughs> I'll just keep doing it in my front yard. That's <laughs> <laughs> where everybody can watch. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, what's weird, though, is if I was out there in the summertime with no shirt on doing it, nobody, nobody would look would at me think. like I was crazy. Right. But just because it's a little cold outside. A little cold, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking snowing. It's because there's ice on the ground. <laughs> right. Where do you even do it out there? It's so snowy. I thought I was going to fucking break my leg walking in the door. Right there in the middle. <laughs> it adds like a whole other element. Like you got to stabilize the whole time. I've real thought about doing it with no shoes on the other day. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I met this uh, guy. He actually, he came on, uh, came into the studio to do Amanda's podcast. His name's uh, Tony. Uh, and he actually knew about, he d- uses steel maces, which I thought was awesome. Um, but he's doing a podcast uh called side missions which in a video game uh a video game like say an open world video game you have the storyline you can go through but you can do these side missions that don't necessarily get you closer to your goal but they do improve your character Mm. and so he's doing this side missions podcast with uh different random things that may not get you to your goal but will improve your character right so the first one he was doing it was it was like the perfect thing because he was doing uh uh well i forget what it's called but like stuff with the cold like cold showers oh yeah ice baths uh and and all this stuff so when he came on like (laughs) amanda was like Dave, go ahead and give yourself a mic for this one because you guys are going to want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so me and him talk quite a bit, but then I talk to him afterwards. I want to help him. I actually I got to give him a call because he's really just doing it just on his phone. Oh, wow. Um, but I think it's such a cool concept. Like, you know, this one's cold, uh, the cold therapy stuff, and then now he's going to jump into a different 
thing. Right. I, I just think that's a really awesome idea. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the play on words, it, I think, is really it's cool, perfect. too. It's yeah. perfect, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that setup a lot. That's awesome. He's also an independent pro wrestler. Oh. Yeah. Iceman Tony Johnson. <laughs> Yes. So cool. So perfect. <laughs> Me and him did nerd out for a little while on I believe too. it. <laughs> like, I don't watch it anymore, but I still love my history with right. it. Right. <laughs> uh, now I'm all about the UFC. Because yeah. it's real. <laughs> yes. It is much more real than WWE. <laughs> oh, man. But you still have to admire those athletes, though, because <clears throat> that's one thing we said on there. I said, I may not be into, like, the show of it anymore, but those guys literally have, like, 30 days off a year the rest of the time they're traveling and putting their bodies through hell right like <clears throat> fighting uh fighting fighting fighting, <laughs> fighting. quotations <laughs> fighting <laughs> but they're but they're... even still i mean even the like <clears throat> pretend or like play of it i guess mm. i mean i'm sure it was still taxing on the body and i mean they yeah. were all in great shape so <clears throat> right right I'm, I'm sure they're all on the natch too yeah <laughs> <laughs> no steroids there <laughs> But, but they, uh, <clears throat> but that's my thing is their bodies still do like they take a lot of abuse, right? A lot of abuse, right? I'm, I mean, it's 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 not safe or I would say healthy, even, <laughs> yeah, like, to, to be taking those falls and those bumps, right? Every damn All day, the time, right? Yeah, but it was it was a cool podcast. I actually I signed him up to do mine as well. Oh, good, yeah, I think it'll be fun, yeah. Got draws coming on too. How about the last time I drank? This was another reason I was like, you got to fucking make sure you stay on top of things mo came and recorded a podcast i normally like f save and export it as soon as i'm done well the fights were on me and mo had been drinking and i didn't and i don't uh, the episode's gone oh man yeah isn't that a bummer that is a bummer i'm yeah. sure it was a good one he's yeah. got all he's it's just super intelligent right so just, <laughs> just knows things he's just like one of right. those dudes yeah and he just he's done so many cool things yeah exactly he's yeah. got a lot of cool experiences like yeah it would have yeah. been a great episode yeah i just did one with uh you know british chris yeah. chris cornell I just did one with him it was a lot of fun he's an interesting interesting guy i'm sure he had a lot of interesting things oh, to say man. well we were it was so funny because it was the first one i did where i wasn't drinking because of the 75 days oh, yeah. and, you know he brought a bottle of whiskey and beer he expects it to be like right. what i normally do right and uh <laughs> Uh, but so we ended up just telling like a bunch of drinking stories in like foreign countries and stuff like that. Oh man! Oh yeah, because you have quite a few as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. well. You didn't even get fully into mine, right? But one thing he pointed out to me that I never really thought about. He was like, you know, in America, uh, Americans think of England and British people as being like real uh, well-to-do and like royalty or whatever, right? You know, gentlemen. He was like, the whole of Europe sees us as drunken morons. And I was like, oh, man, I never really thought about that. He's like, yeah. I'm like, and I started thinking about soccer hooligans and stuff right. like that. I'm like, man, I never really thought about that. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> we're, you know, we're a lot closer to England and America than I thought we right. were. Right. Because that's how I figure the rest of the world sees us. Right. <laughs> I'll never forget uh, talking to him down at the gym one time, and he was like, Americans just always want to talk about how much they work and you know they're all work obsessed and how many hours they put in and he was like we're not like that over there like yeah. nobody wants to talk about work outside of work nobody wants to brag about how many hours they work a day and i was like that's how it should be yeah it it's really crazy should be. like it's yeah I, I don't want to talk about it when i leave either i mean sometimes it comes up but i don't want to like i always thought it was weird how people would have conversations like instead of saying like you're happy with your new house. Like, oh, I got the mortgage. You know, right. Like, Why don't you talk about, like, how cool it is inside? That you got a house. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got a roof over your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not everybody has that right. guy. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. And I think that's a big thing. And, you know, changing people's, you know, or, you know, your own perspective on things instead of looking at it as a, a burden, you know, just yeah. like flipping in and looking at it as a, you know, something to be grateful for. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think as a whole, it's a weird thing that hopefully COVID is like one of maybe the positive things of COVID is that we've learned to not work as much or even like you can do some things from home or whatever, because to think of like putting in 40 hours a week is a lot. Yeah. And if you have a salary job, they actually expect you to put in 50, 60 hours a week. Right. Like, that's a lot. That's man. a lot. Like, you don't really have time for life right. when you're working 50, 60 hours right. a week. Right. Absolutely. Well, I remember even, like, I don't know, partway through it, and 
it was you know the big thing was like if you're sick do not come to work no matter what like we yeah. don't want you here if you're sick like that should have been promoted from the beginning of work you know yeah. what i mean like you shouldn't have to push through and come to work if you don't feel good. Yeah. Like, it's just a job, right. you know? But it, people always expected you to just come to work, even if you were sick. And, um, you know, I hope that's something that does carry on, you know, past COVID if we ever, you know, even Get make it outside it of COVID. But, but think, you know, that to take care of yourself and not always, you know, jeopardize your well-being, well-being yeah. mentally and physically. I think part of the issue with that, though, is, like, especially when you know, like, like, well, you know, Bob drinks, right? So then he calls off and like, well, is he not feeling good or is he hung over? Right. You know, right. Or, or Dave. Right. <laughs> Dave is Bob is Dave. <laughs> Dave. Bob is Dave. Dave is Bob. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, because you have to ask that question. Now, honestly, a lot of times that's why I went to work even when I was sick because I'm right. like, they know I drink. Right. They're going to know I'm just hung over. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got to go to work. Right. <laughs> Right. Nice. So just so everybody knows, if I ever call off, I am actually sick. Because when I'm hungover, I'm like, they're going to know. Right. I'll be there if I'm hungover. If I'm sick, I might not come. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I really do hope that it's something that can take place. Actually, the other thing I was just thought about is people saying like, oh, all of a sudden we, we barely got any flu cases. Well, yeah, because we're taking precautions that we've never taken before. Right. Well, I was just talking to somebody about that yesterday or the last day I was at the mall doing a clinic. Like really like our sanitary you know situation should have probably been the way it is now always like right. wiping things down like yeah. you know grocery carts mm -hmm. like people touching those you know people after people after people like it's kind of gross and you know increasing yeah. the sanitation process is not a bad uh, thing <laughs> it's, uh, it's so weird to me because i also think there's like a balance you have to find because if you try to constantly sanitize everything you don't give your immunity your immune system a chance to get strong. I agree. I do agree with that. I think, you know, you have to have some exposure, but I think, you know, there was measures that could have been taken I agree. always. You know, yeah. people are grimy. Well, and honestly, even like in Japan and China, they've been wearing masks forever. Like, and not to protect themselves from other people. If they felt sick, they wore a mask. Right. To protect people from them. Right. And they've been doing it forever. Right. And that just seems like an okay, common courtesy thing to do. Right. <clears throat> you know. Right. Uh, so. It, well, and you, even here, I mean, it wasn't as common, but if people, you know, were going through cancer treatments or were immunocompromised, it wasn't uncommon for you to see people wearing a mask. Right. But I you, mean, not to the extent of, you know, regularly wearing them out in public in China, but. Right. You know. Because when I, when I was in China, I mean, you saw a lot of people with oh, them. Oh, yeah. You know? But, you know, they had a much bigger issue with what was it SARS back in the day mm -hmm. so they probably just learned that a lot quicker yeah absolutely and, well and there I mm. I heard a lot of it before too was because of their air quality is so poor like the smog in the air is yeah but so how much poor. does little paper mash really help with that because their air quality is definitely poor bad you can yeah. feel it it's thick that's disgusting <laughs> <laughs> it's not great <laughs> we were talking about places just being crowded too because also in China like that it has to be more of a common courtesy too because it's because so crowded. it is so crowded right but man even worse than that which I never really think about India Mm. India is as crowded as it gets. Yeah, like it's kind of people nuts. everywhere. Yeah, like we I think like really think when I was that. in New York, I was like, I am too close to people. Yeah, like this is it's it's <laughs> it's a lot. Right, and then I think like people who actually live in India, like they literally, you're never like if you're in the main city, you're probably never not touching somebody. Right, that's kind of crazy. That's yeah, it's wild, right? Yeah, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Not really my thing. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to have to take a quick piss break, and then I was actually going to see what you've been watching lately. Oh. Have you been watching anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And we're back, and I just realized that I didn't do a clap on the first thing, so now it's going to be a pain in the ass to line up the Ooh. audio and the video. Oh, that's what you... <clears throat> that's why I clap. Oh, man. Yeah. So now Ooh. I'm just going to have to keep playing with it. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but have you been watching any shows or anything? Nothing. Nothing bro. at all. Nothing. Huh? What do you guys do? <laughs> I don't know. Like try to maintain my children. I watch a lot of um <clears throat> they're into he's really into Shark Boy and Lava Girl. We watch a lot of superhero movies. Um yeah, when I sit down in my free time without watching kids shows, I've been re rewatching Grey's Anatomy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I know. It's really not even. I 
Yeah. What cracks me up about that? Because you're in the medical field. I mean, how much of it are you like, all right? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I think I get a little bit of like satisfaction out of it because I'm I'm in the medical field still, but I'm not getting that like hospital patient satisfaction. You know what I mean? Of like having emergency situations. And I do miss that side of things a little bit. So I like watch it and I get like that thrill a little bit, you know? (laughs) But with your knowing of how certain things work. Work. Yeah. I just. (laughs) Because I actually, every once in a while, when I'm scrolling through Facebook, there's uh, this, though, I'll find videos of this doctor who watches shows like Grey's oh, Anatomy. Oh, yeah, criti- critiques and like he was everything. Like, they that... would never do that. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I just try to blow those things off. <laughs> I feel like if I had, like, I like hospital shows, yeah. not necessarily Grey's Anatomy, but like House. Uh, right. I watched that Good Doctor. Oh, yeah. With the autistic mm-hmm. surgeon. <laughs> um, if, if you could do it, I guess. Right. But, uh, but I don't have that knowledge. Right. So when things are awry, I'm not like, oh, come on. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> That's exactly how it would be done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just pull that light pole right out of that guy's stomach. <laughs> you guys got to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. I was just watching an episode the other day and they were doing something and I'm like, that is not at all how that would happen. But I'm like, oh, it's OK. It's OK. Yeah. You're like, OK, well, both this those is so guys intense. <laughs> this is so much more exciting than answering the phone. <laughs> Telling someone they have COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I still tell people that uh, when you had to call me to quarantine, you just like you just wanted to ground me. I did. Like, oh, I'm going to ground my older brother. <laughs> All right. Finally. <laughs> I had the upper hand. He has to listen to me. <laughs> really, you didn't, though. Half the people don't. So. <laughs> Not me. I followed, your, you I followed your rules. You did follow the rules. I tried to take care of you. I brought you a couple meals. Yeah, you brought me groceries. Mm-hmm. I had a girl that works for me, Courtney. She's like uh, she's like my right-hand man over there. Uh, she's a server. And she was like, can I can I bring you groceries or anything? I'm like, oh, no, my, my sister got it. And she was like, all right. I was just trying to be helpful. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't need extra groceries. <laughs> I don't need double groceries. <laughs> I really don't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> right. Uh, I know you haven't been to this house, but there's no space. There's there's two podcast studios, a tiny little bathroom, a bedroom, and two cabinets. I said I said I think that's why I actually turned this into like just a studio space because uh the kitchen and bathroom don't really work for like a house kitchen and bathroom. <laughs> it makes much more sense as an office. <laughs> that's the truth (laughs) i remember when i did pick up your groceries and as i was loading them on your porch i was like this really doesn't seem sufficient then i was like oh yeah he doesn't really have a refrigerator yeah the refrigerator's (laughs) in the garage i've actually since bought i don't know if you saw it over there i've bought a like a small refrigerator oh nice so i use that for the stuff i want immediate access to right right put the rest in the oh that's good yeah Yeah. no i didn't notice because it doesn't take doesn't take up as much space, space yeah, yeah. yeah space just... is definitely limited here yeah yeah but it's serving its purpose and it's cool that you got the studio in here yeah oh well and honestly for that in in a lot of ways i like it more yeah weirdly less is more sometimes yeah. you know and i feel like i've just kind of created my own little world in here yeah and uh i don't know i like it yeah and uh, and like we were saying earlier I take my you naps know, right there that's how you how you got to look at it, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to find the good and, and change. I mean, well, you know, a lot of good changes happened since I came here, too. I mean, yeah. at first I was not happy about it at all. And then I got happy with even just the less space, less to take care of. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, a lot of good things have just a lot of good things have, have happened. fallen into place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now I'm like, man, even if I do end up striking it rich with this uh, new endeavor we're doing, uh do I really want that much bigger of a house? <laughs> Do you really need it? Yeah, like I'm no. pretty comfortable. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, more house really just brings more <laughs> more of a pain, really. Yeah. Brad and I are constantly just like, the house is fucking filthy. Yeah. You know, the dogs are, there's dog hair everywhere. We that, were trying to move a couch uh, from the basement upstairs because we still have no furniture in that living room that we moved the furniture out of. Yeah. It's just this big empty room. It's, kind of ridiculous and so we were trying to move a couch upstairs from downstairs and it wasn't fitting up the steps so we tried to take it back down the steps and as it was going down the steps it punched a big hole in the wall 
I her. was jacked, and it was like literally like an how hour, big? an hour, but like it was like a, it's uh, like a chunk like this. We could patchwork that. Yeah, and that's what he said. It's gonna be fine, but it was yeah. still just like a nuisance. And moving furniture alone is very annoying. I hate doing it. Mm. And it was like an hour before I was supposed to be here, and he was like dead set on getting it done. And I was like, I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> just, I just want to go talk. All right. I just want to go sit at my brother's house and hang out with him for a little bit. And I don't want to move furniture right now. And then, if, and then it didn't even fit up the steps. So we had to, like I said, we had to take, take it, back it back down. down. We're going to have to take it out and around. Mm. And the hassle. It is. Yeah. Oh, and yesterday he was like, he was home with the uh w- with bronson and there was like a mouse in the middle of our floor not sure where that came from really? it was like it was really fat and really slow he thinks it was pregnant and then our dog got it and killed it oh listen <laughs> you got to deal with those mouse i tell you about the mouse i had here no i feel like he was the arnold schwarzenegger of a mouse because <laughs> i never saw him <clears throat> i mean eventually i did catch him but yeah how about the snap traps oh yeah and i put peanut butter on them he got through it. The first time I came home, like it, he would obviously got caught in it because he dragged it, but then he got out of it. Oh, man. And I was like, well, what kind of mouse am I dealing with here? So then there was a second one and I came home the next day. Same thing. He got caught in it, drug got it around the house it. for a minute, got out of it. I said, this is why Nymeria hides in the bedroom when I'm gone. Aren't you scared some, of <laughs> There's some steroid mouse in here. I finally had to get one of those sticky traps, and I tried to, like, get him off of it. I don't... I mean, I got him off it. Yeah. I don't know how well it went for him after that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, because he was, he was going into the silverware drawer. Oh, yeah. And just shitting all over oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't have, have this. Dude, when we... Right after we moved into this house, you know, we're, like, all fired up. We bought, like, a pretty nice house in a nice neighborhood. We spent a good bit of money on it, and we're like, oh, this is awesome. We're sitting at the island, and... One of our friends is there, Chris, and he looks over, and we have pizza sitting on the stove, and there's just a mouse just chilling on the stove eating the pizza, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? (laughs) I started freaking out, (laughs) and of course, you know what they say, like, if there's one, there's more. Yeah. So, and, you know, we don't eat meat. We're, like, you know, vegan. We're humane. We, like, don't want to kill it, so we set, like, all these humane traps while it's not catching them. No. (laughs) <laughs> they don't those two bait traps don't work don't, don't work and and they say like if you just if you catch them and then let them go they're just gonna come back yeah yeah you have to take so, them to somebody else's house yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so i think after that one like we mm. caught that one and then we ended up catching like two more and then i think it was it but i think the problem was in our basement she had put in like a doggy door yeah and it was open, and I think they were, like, getting in there and then coming up, like, through the wall behind yeah. the, and then coming up behind the stove. I don't know where this one came from the other day, though. And he was, like, it wasn't skittish at all. It was just, like, sitting on the carpet. It was, like, barely moving. But it was, like, real fat, so that's why he thinks it was pregnant. I'm like, well, thank God. Well, apparently you guys were feeding him well. <laughs> oh, God, they're so gross, too. And I know they're just little, but they freak me out so bad. <laughs> I get so skittish around them. <laughs> Like, like the elephant and then cartoons. i feel like like why do i like it feels like so dirty but i don't know people say it's really common and like the woods are like right across the street from our house i guess so they could come up from there yeah. and it's cold so they're just trying to find somewhere warm but i definitely do feel like it's covid it is like anybody we talk to yeah. says that they've had them before but it's not, it's it's, not like it's not like cockroaches yeah if you have like, cockroaches there's a problem right <laughs> then you're filthy clean your house <laughs> right yeah yeah well, and a mouse probably freaking loves our house because it's all like nuts and seeds and grains. Yeah. It's like a mouse's diet. Yeah, they're like, oh, they, they, they brought all this food here for me. <laughs> Flax seeds? Those are my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like a little house set up. Right, in house. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <sighs> but have things uh, with this vaccine, have uh, things been getting... A little Better. bit more mellowed out. Yeah, actually, you know, the last couple of weeks have been pretty good. I mean, vaccine distribution is busy, but it's like a controlled busy and it's a happy busy. You right. know, like people are excited. People are anxious. People are grateful. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot different than just constantly calling hundreds of people a day, telling them they have COVID and they need to quarantine and then their family needs to quarantine and they can't work for two weeks. Like yeah. it was all just depressing. Yeah. You know, Um. So things have definitely calmed down a little bit. 
and um i don't know hopefully it's it's heading in the right direction it's been a it was wild like nothing i had ever experienced before going through like yeah you know with work well and i know we've said it before too but like when you first got the job i was like all right i got this nice cushy nine right to five. i'm sitting in an office overlooking downtown steubenville <laughs> i can see the river i'm like this is laid up <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on me. Here's a pandemic for you. <laughs> yeah. Public health seemed like a good right. idea. Right. <laughs> yeah. Last February, I was like handing out condom bouquets and telling people to have safe sex. And, you know, this, this February, I'm vaccinating, you know, thousands of people a week. So I would like to go back to condom uh, bouquets. Right. What is that? <laughs> So I made these like little cups that had like all these like popsicle sticks that had these funny little condoms on them. And I took them to like a bunch of bars in Jefferson County on Valentine's Day (laughs) so that people would practice safe sex. (laughs) That's the kind of public health shit I like. (laughs) <laughs> that is hilarious yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, before before COVID, chlamydia was a big problem. <laughs> it was the other big C in public health. <laughs> you had, you had like, guys at bars like this bitch. Right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> they were like what are you bringing me and i was like oh it's a condom bouquet and they were like what the fuck <laughs> that is so funny yeah it was awesome <laughs> it was it was good times did you get a lot of weird looks oh my god <laughs> they were <laughs> yeah yeah they uh, were like what that's hilarious yeah and, and you took them to bars yeah of course i mean <laughs> Who hey, else needs them? No, you guys are gonna have drunken sex later. Right. Here's take a one of these with you. And they were all funny. They all had like funny little sayings on them, and uh, yeah, it was like a promotional thing because we give out free condoms at the health department, and you know we do like a bunch of like free testing for people HIV and yeah. stuff. So when you did the bouquet, were there multiple condoms on the bouquet? Oh yeah, there was like ten or fifteen. And did you ever have somebody be like, like? What kind of night do you think this is going to be? Well, I was hoping like <laughs> one person would take eat, like one flower out of it. <laughs> it wasn't all for one person, but if it needed to be, then that's fine too. So, so somebody's <laughs> holding the bouquet. They're like, I think this lady just called me a whore. <laughs> I mean, whatever works for you. Just do it safely. <laughs> that's great. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah uh, things definitely uh shifted from last year to to this year but yeah. i think we're we're heading in the right direction hopefully getting on the other side of it yeah. yeah i don't know if it'll ever completely like be gone you know i don't know well i think i think there's always going to be like a reevaluation of how we think about being in public yeah which is not necessarily a bad, bad thing, thing like you were right. saying like <clears throat> Like those shopping carts and stuff like right. that. Like if you think about it, it's gross. You don't know who had that before you or literally the thousands of people that right. had it before you. <clears throat> yeah, and maybe not <clears throat> as often, but it should be like wiped down a couple times a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like little things like that and really like personal space. Like people standing right on top of people all the time. It's crazy though. Like to me, I'll watch <clears throat> like a movie or a show now and I'll see a bunch of people in a room like all standing close together and not wearing masks and like I feel like uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh man this should not like that shouldn't be the norm for me now but but like new shows that come out now you do like you, they people are wearing there. masks yeah yeah it's, it's crazy that's that's the part that's weird to me to see yeah uh, like I don't know why but for some reason that still hasn't hit me like you were talking about seeing that and people being in a room together and right it, for some reason it still doesn't give me anxiety or stress me out um honestly sometimes seeing the shows where they everybody's constantly wearing a mask whether they're sick or not stresses right me out. it's weird yeah. it's just weird yeah, yeah it's it's weird times but i don't know i think it was i think you know for me professionally it was a huge growing and learning experience yeah i mean i made a lot of decisions and a lot of calls that i never thought that i was going to be capable of doing (laughs) you know like i went from zero to 100 real quick i was working part-time before that you know not really i don't know trying to figure out what i wanted to do and 
then I fell into this position and, you know, things took off like crazy. So I, mean, I remember you being pretty stressed out too. Like at one point you just messaged me like, can we just hang out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, can we just, yeah. Can we just sit down and talk? Right. <laughs> and then yeah. my asshole, I'm like, yeah, let's do a podcast. <laughs> like, I just wanted to talk to you. Right. Does everything have to be on camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and I remember the first time we sat down to talk, I was like so nervous. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. Like I can't, I don't yeah. know if, what I should say, what I'm allowed to say. You know, I can't really voice my opinion on it and yeah. uh i think i directed that well though cause, oh yeah because we because you had said like i really don't want to talk about it at all and, I, and right. I, in my head i was like we have to talk about at it. at least touch on it because it was like yeah. just emerging at that point and yeah. you know and but i you know i i made sure we stuck to the things that were facts right you know what i right. mean and as we know it and things as we knew them at that point yeah because i felt like it had to be touched on definitely i mean it was huge and it was upcoming at that point so we definitely you know it was a current situation i was thinking about that first one too and i was like uh i remember saying like my goal for the next year was to become like more politically uh knowledgeable and like know things about politics yeah. while well, that like went out the window completely i don't you know didn't, one you didn't have time right i didn't have time and then Two, all, who wants like, to get involved exactly in it? after that I, like after especially the way this year went with everything with politics which i do, still do not want to touch on i was just like oh thank god i don't know anything yeah <laughs> that's my my biggest issue is is nobody could have a conversation with each other that's the big problem well and it's crazy too like we were me and brad were talking about it like that's something that used to be like a very like personal uh thing you really didn't like politics and religion weren't something that were just like openly discussed with people because it is like a very personal opinion and like i don't know i it's ruined a lot of relationships for people yeah. it's crazy but i think i think we have to learn how to talk about it just because everybody has so many platforms uh i think it's good to talk about them i think people need to learn how to talk about them healthy yeah and they have to learn how to go in there with an open mind like honestly one thing uh that 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 awareness book was talking about it said um you don't like he even says like you may not agree with what i'm saying in this book right now but you need to go into it with an open mind even if you don't end up agreeing with me right he's like that's that's really where freedom comes from he said like if you if you are really that upset about somebody disagreeing with you, it's probably not even an idea you had on your own. It's probably right. an idea that somebody else planted, planted in your head right. and you're that mad. And th that's why you're getting that mad about it. Right. You, if somebody presents you with different facts, you have to be able to deal with those facts. And, right. You know, and maybe it changes your view. Maybe it doesn't change your view. But it doesn't mean you have to attack the person or be mad at the person. Right. Or not be friends anymore. <laughs> right. Exactly. Not be yeah. No, I anymore. agree with that a hundred percent. People um, need to learn how to have healthy conversations. Yeah, and I've even learned that a lot. You know, going through all of this and and being like you know so immersed in COVID and hearing different people's opinions and. Um, it, it is healthy to hear people that have different opinions than me on yeah. situations. I need to be open to those ideas too, because everything that I know or have learned is, you know, something that somebody else has told me or I have learned on my own, but it's still okay for other people to have different opinions. Like, and that, and like I said, that's healthy for me because I need to ha have an open mind to things. Yeah. That's how, that's how people like, grow and how situations evolve right you know not everything has to be the same one track right you know well and if you can't listen to somebody else then why would you expect them to be able to listen to you right well and i'm not i've never been that type of person anyway that's like super like strong opinion where i'm gonna be like no i'm right or you have to listen to me yeah. you know that's really not my my mo either but at the same time like i uh i did i would you know, behind closed doors, then I would be like, well, they said this or they said that. But, you know, I've, I have learned to just be a little bit more open and not yeah. judgmental when I'm, I'm going into yeah. a situation where I know somebody's going to have a different opinion than me. Well, and sometimes that's the healthy way to handle that, though, is to th have those thoughts or say them out loud afterwards when you're by yourself. Right. Because being rude or whatever to somebody isn't going to help the situation whatsoever right and it could you know yeah it's really just gonna if anything shut them off for further opportunity to maybe see the see things the way you see them or in a different light right. you know if you're so abrasive that you're like no you know i'm right or this or that you know then they're never nobody wants to be told what right. to do or how to think or anything like that you know you 
people have to come to those decisions on their own. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What time is it? It is 8 o'clock. All right. Well, maybe we should wrap this up. I know. Yeah, we were just like <laughs> on a roll there. <laughs> yeah, it just started right from the get-go. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question for you. Uh-oh. And it's just from the uh, last podcast I did with Chris. So, like, athletic shoes. What do you call them? Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Yeah, me too. But me and Chris were talking about it at the very beginning of the last podcast. And it's weird because I don't play tennis. Yeah. Never have. I've never have either. Well, that's a lie. I have, but not regularly yeah like i went out there a couple times and he said sneakers he's like why are we sneaking around (laughs) what's he call them it's trainers because that's what they call them in england which i think might actually be the right answer i i like that yeah and i when i and i this just started when i started doing crossfit but i would always call it like i'm gonna go out and train like i would train rather than work Uh, out yeah i'm not training for anything other than life <laughs> right <laughs> Other than trying to be a functional human being. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah uh yeah i like trainers i think that's that's a good term yeah i think i think I that, I think that, that. that might be the most accurate accurate, accurate. Term. yeah because yeah. i'm definitely not playing tennis i'm definitely not sneaking around yeah sometimes i call them kicks kicks i like that <laughs> those are for the stylish ones yes <laughs> <laughs> these ones have no use <laughs> I just kick around on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sis. Well, thanks for doing this. Absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me again. It's always fun. Yeah, it's always a good time. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll go to the gym together again sometime. Yes, absolutely. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. All this right. gather fools right here. Peace.